A huge new iOS update just dropped with some awesome new settings, some of which though are awesomely bad. The first one we'll talk about is one that's going to save Apple on their support costs, but also might compromise your privacy if you don't know how it works. Let's dive in. I'll open up settings and scroll down to face ID and passcode. Tap on that. I'll enter my passcode and scroll down to change passcode. And we have to talk because in iOS 17, Apple completely changed what happens when you change your passcode. And it is less secure than it used to be. Let's say your conniving cousin, Kurt, gets a hold of your phone, cracks your super secure password of 1234, and now he's in the Photos app, in the hidden album, and he's up to no good. What do you do? You get the phone back and you change your passcode. So let's do that. I'll tap change passcode, enter my current passcode, and then enter a new passcode. I can't remember six numbers, so I'm gonna tap passcode options at the bottom. I'll choose four digit numeric code and pick a new super secure password of 2345. And 2345. In the olden days, I'd be safe, but not anymore. In iOS 17, Apple introduced a feature called temporary passcode reset. For the next 72 hours, you can enter your old passcode, which is the wrong passcode, and then reset it again to a new, different passcode. If you think that you can remember your four digit new passcode, then the safest thing to do is tap expire previous passcode now. I think this feature is designed to save Apple money, but it's not too good for you. Next up, a cool feature that's designed to protect your eyesight, but that a lot of people are having issues with, especially people who don't have the best vision in the world. We'll tap back to settings. We're gonna scroll up. Well, I just moved the whole damn phone. I'll tap back to settings in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, and we're gonna scroll up to screen time and tap on that. And some of the people I've talked to have actually turned this on accidentally. Come down here to screen distance, and I'm gonna turn this switch off. The people I've talked to that find this annoying are people who wear glasses, or people who don't have the best vision, especially at night. When they're in bed, they're holding the phone up to their face to be able to actually read easily without eye strain, but then the phone is saying it's too close to your face. Is having this switch turned off going to harm you? Well, it says down here that it's gonna reduce the risk of myopia in children. So if you're an adult, I don't think it's probably worth the annoyance of having it say to move your phone away from your face. For kids, maybe it's a different story. I am not a doctor. Before we move on, I wanna apologize in advance to you. I'm gonna be using the four letter S word a little bit in this next setting. Let's tap screen time in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, then tap settings. I'm gonna go down a little bit to Siri and search. I'll tap on that. And this is a brand new iOS 17 feature. I'll tap on listen for, and here we have Siri or Hey Siri. I just wanted to mention this because if you're someone who accidentally activates Siri a lot, you probably don't wanna make it easier to activate Siri. I think Apple has done a really good job with this where I can use Siri in a sentence and it won't necessarily activate, but if you don't like this new just say Siri thing, you can go back to Hey Siri or shut it off completely. I will leave it on Siri. But now it just, I gotta set up Hey Siri and Siri again. Next up, a new iOS 17 feature that normal people should just turn right off. I'll tap back and back to settings again. I'm gonna scroll down to music. Don't usually go there. Tap on music, then I'm gonna scroll down to crossfade. I'm a normal person just like you. I like blending soda and Mentos. I like mixing sour cream and onion potato chips with salt and vinegar, normal. But when it comes to music, crossfade is kind of dumb. Unless you're listening to EDM, I suppose, where everything has the same beat and you can't tell the difference between the songs anyway. Burn. But if you're a normal person like me and your playlist is filled with country music and death metal, Let's see what it sounds like when we mix them together. Can we all agree that that wasn't good? I like that Apple built this feature in, but I am turning it off. Before we move on, maybe you're not a pay it forward channel member, but you wanna crossfade into being one so you get free PDFs in addition to a lot of other cool stuff. Click the join button below the video. That's the crossfade I like. Next, and speaking of music, let's head back to settings and head up to sounds and haptics. Tap on that. Ringtone, 
Let's tap on that. And iOS 17 includes a bunch of awesome new ringtones. It's time to turn off your old tired ringtone that you haven't changed in the last seven years. Well, let's be honest. There are some really cool ones. The one that I was really impressed with is called Radio. And that is a really cool demo of the spatial audio that your phone can actually do. It sounds very stereo. How does that work? Hashtag sample delay. But the real reason I wanted to come to this section of settings is for me. I do have an ulterior motive for taking you to this section. If we go back, I would just like to show you how to make your phone as least annoying as possible for your friends. First thing, scroll down to keyboard feedback. Tap on that. Do we want to hear the clickety clacks every time you're typing the keyboard on your iPhone? I don't want to hear you typing. Turn off sound. Haptic is up to you. It's that little feedback. Can't really hear it from far away, but it does drain your battery life. Even Apple admits that. I'll turn that off. Tap back. We're not done. Lock sound? Do I need to hear the when you lock your phone? I don't think so. Do you need to hear it? Turn it off. System haptics. Let's turn that off too. It's okay. I mean, you press the button, you get a little feedback. Maybe you like that, maybe you don't. It's gonna drain your battery, turn it off. Next up, tap back to the main page of settings, then tap on notifications, then tap on screen sharing. Okay, this is not a new feature, but there are a ton of awesome new features in tvOS 17 that makes this one more important than ever. And that's why I just wanted to bring it up to mention it. If this is on and you're FaceTiming on Apple TV, for example, now somebody can see your embarrassing text messages you're getting during the conversation. Do you want that? I don't. Let's turn off allow notifications. And just as an aside, we have a video coming out soon about tvOS and these awesome new Apple TV features that were just introduced. If you want to be informed when that video drops, just Whoa. click the subscribe button below the video. Next up, a new feature that all my rich and powerful celebrity friends who shall remain nameless love, name drop. Let's tap back to notifications, back to settings. We're gonna tap on general, and it's actually not under name drop. We'll tap on airdrop. Start sharing by bringing devices together. I'm gonna turn this off. I've heard stories where this feature is being triggered accidentally when people are in crowded situations. If you wanna try it, leave it on. But if you wanna protect yourself to the maximum extent, I would recommend turn off bringing devices together. Use good old fashioned airdrop. And just because you turn this off doesn't mean you can't take advantage of an awesome new iOS 17 feature, one of my favorites, called contact posters. We made a video about that one. You should check it out. We will see you there. I am not a doctor. Zach's dad is an, uh, a doctor, doctor yeah. an eye doctor. He'd help. He'd help, yeah, we should have your dad on. Dr. Allen? Yeah, right? Dr. Yeah. Allen, yeah. Dr. Allen. 